Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over the January 2025 Algebra 1 Regents exam. In this video, we're going to be going over part 3, which are four short response questions, each worth four points. A link to this test can be found in the description of this one if you want to follow along at home. And this video is a part of a bigger series where I'm going to go over every single question from every single part from this Regents exam. So if you want to go over part 1, 2, or 4, the videos that review those sections are in the description of this one. That being said, we're going to start off with number 31, which asks us the following or tells us the following. Alex had a dollar and 70 in nickels and dimes on his desk. There were 25 coins in all. Write a system of equations that could be used to determine both the number of nickels n and the number of dimes d that Alex had. So in this case, a system of equations is just going to be a, a, uh, a layout of two or more equations that represent a situation. So in this case, we know that he has a total value of a dollar and seventy in nickels and dimes, and we also know that there's a total number of coins in all. So on the regions, this is a very specific and very common pattern of questions. They'll tell you, they'll tell you like the value of two things and also the total quantity of those two things. So we know that we're representing nickels and the number of dimes. So if I add the total number of nickels and the total number of dimes together, I'm going to have the total number of coins. So n plus d has to equal to 25. The total number of nickels and the total number of, co uh, of dimes gives me all the coins that he has. So that covers this part of the system of equation. That covers the quantity part. Now comes the, the, the value part. So we know that he has a dollar and 70 cents in nickels and dimes. So how much does a nickel cost? Well, or how much is a nickel worth? A nickel is worth 0 0.05 of a dollar, right? Or five cents, right? There's a hundred cents in a dollar. Five cents is 0 0.05, right? Um, so that's 0 0.05 times N plus 0 0.1, which is the amount that a dime is worth, right? That's 10 cents over a hundred cents in dollar. That's 0 0.1 of a dollar times D. And if you add both of these together, you get a dollar and 70. So, that's the second equation, okay? So now that we have the two equations, the system of equation needs two on the regions, we can move on to the next part. So again, let me just reiterate this, right? For a system of equations, you're going to combine the quantity to get how much they have in total, the total number of blank, and then you're gonna to have to combine the value to get the total value of blank, okay? I got 0 0.05 because five cents is equal to 0 0.05 dollars. I got 0 0.1 D because 0 0.1 is equal to the uh, is, is 10 cents, which is how much a dime is worth. So the second part asks us to use our system of equations to determine the number of nickels and dimes that he had. So the issue with the system of equations is you need to rewrite one of these in terms of the other. There's no way to solve an equation that has two variables unless you plug one of them in. Luckily for me, I already know that n plus d is equal to 25. So I can easily rewrite this in terms of n or d. So let's just rewrite it in terms of n. If I want to get n on its own, I can say that I can just subtract d on both sides. So I know that n is equal to 25 minus d, okay? Now that I have n, I can plug it into this equation because right now there's no way of solving 0.05n plus 0.1d unless I know what either one of them are equal to. Now I know that n is equal to 25 minus d, so I can just do that, I can just plug it in. So instead of saying 0.05 times n, I can say 0.05 times 25 minus d plus 0.1 d is equal to 1.70. So now I can just solve for d because all I have here is d. So I can expand this by multiplying 0 0.05 times 25 to get 1.25 minus 0 0.05 d plus 0 0.1 d is equal to 1.70. So I can combine these two d's, I can combine my like terms, 1.25 um, plus 0 0.05, because you have negative 0 0.05 plus 0 0.1, that's equal to positive 0 0.05d, is equal to 1.70. Then I can subtract this 1.25 on both sides. So 1.70 minus 1.25 is equal to 0 0.45. So 0 0.05d is equal to 0 0.45. Divide both sides by 0 0.05 and 0 0.05, and you get that d has to equal to nine, okay? Is this my answer? No, because I just solved for the number of dimes. Now I need to solve for the number of nickels. 
well, I know that the number of nickels plus dimes is equal to 25. And I just found out that the number of dimes was 9. So I can replace D with 9, subtract 9 on both sides, and get that N is equal to 16. So he must have, so Alex must have or has 16 nickels and 9 dimes. So that's how we arrive at that answer, okay? So always, 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 you're going to have the total amount of something. That's just the variable plus another variable. Then you're going to have the total value of that, which is the unit price of that variable times the variable plus, plus the unit price of the other variable times the amount of that variable. Always rewrite this first equation and then plug it into the second equation. It'll make your life a lot easier. Number 32 says the table below shows the average heart rate X and calories burned Y for seven men on an Olympics rowing team during a one hour workout class. Write a linear regression equation that models these data, rounding all values to the nearest tenth. So the linear regression is essentially going to combine these values and give us an equation Y equals MX plus B. So all we have to do is literally plug this into our calculator because there's no other way of doing it other than plugging it into the calculator and copying what the calculator says down. So how do we do this? We go into stats, we go into edit, okay? This is gonna give us a list. I have numbers in this list from a previous problem because I record all these videos in one sitting. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy all of the data from the X into list one and all of the data from the Y into list two. So you're gonna go 135, 147, so on and so forth until you have all the data in there. So I've now inputted all of my data into the table, right? I have my list one as my X. You should always put list one as X and list two as your Y. So then I'm gonna click stats, go into calc, okay? And then I'm gonna scroll down to where I say linreg. Linreg stands for linear regression, which is the test that they want us to run. So that's also gonna, that's gonna be the fourth choice and I'm gonna press enter. Then what it's gonna ask you is for the X list. This is the list that represents the X values. Like I said, put your X values in list one, that way it's automatically there in the right place because your calculator will always put L1 as, as, um, as your X list automatically. Then your Y list is automatically L2 because I told you to put it in there. So again, the calculator will all automatically put list two as the Y list. So all you have to do is press enter, enter, enter and calculate. So what you'll get here is Y equals AX plus B. So you have to state the, that then you have to state that A is equal to 9.11777. But remember, we're rounding all values to the nearest tenth. So just write why A is equal to 9.1. And that B is equal to negative 527.6. So B is equal to negative 527.6. So now all you have to do is plug the A into into the equation y equals ax plus b and the b into that equation as well. So you get y is equal to 9.1x minus 527.6. So that is going to be your final answer. Right? That was a messy box, but that's gonna be your final answer. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and box that in, of course. So here, now what we have to do is we have to state the correlation coefficient to the nearest 10th. So you may be asking, what is that correlation coefficient? Well, it's going to be another value that pops up below this A and this B. Because I use an online calculator, it's automatically reset for me. So if your calculator looks something like this, and you don't have another value R and R squared underneath your A and the B, this is what you have to do. You have to go ahead and you have to press second, then zero. You're going to get a catalog. Then you have to scroll down all the way until you reach the following section you have to go ahead and click diagnostic on. So don't click diagnostic off, press scroll down to diagnostic on, press enter. Okay, it's gonna say done, then go back to stat, calc, one variable, oh sorry, uh, stat, calc, linear regression, press enter, and now you're gonna have an R squared and an R. Your correlation coefficient is just your R. So that is 0 0.90. That's all. To the nearest tenth, don't even put the zero, just put 0 0.9. That's how easy this problem is. All you have to do is plug in data and then copy and paste the data onto the page. Now, this is the only hard part here. 
it states what the correlation coefficient it asks you state what the correlation coefficient states suggest about the linear fit of data so the correlation coefficient is pretty much a rating from negative one to one that the calculator does or gives your data so if your data or if your r value is very close to negative one or very close to one that means that that means that there is a strong linear fit for the data if your data if your r value is close to zero that means that there is a weak fit that means that your data does not strongly follow this format. So if your R, R, literally the R is just a rating that the calculator gives your data. Right now, the calculator gave our data a rating of 0 0.9. So it's saying, okay, this is good. This is a strong fit. How do we know it's a strong fit? Because it's close to one. It's very close to one, as a matter of fact. So the calculator looked at this data and said, yeah, I can fit this data onto this line pretty well. Okay, if our R, R value was like 0 0.5, then we'd say we'd have a weak fit. But because it's so close to one, we can say that we have a strong fit. So the correlation coefficient suggests the correlation coefficient suggests that there is is a strong linear fit linear fit for this data. Okay, that's all you have to say. The closer it is to one or negative one, the stronger uh, linear fit there is for this data, right? So you could have also said that since the correlation coefficient is close to one, it suggests that the linear fit is strong for this data. Or you could say that there's a strong linear fit for the data, um, or that it's a strong positive fit or a strong positive correlation, okay? Um, so again, if your R value is positive, that means that there's a positive correlation. If your R value is negative, that means that there's a negative correlation. But again, the closer it is to negative one or positive one is the uh, stronger positive or stronger negative correlation that there is. So number 33 asks us, using the quadratic formula, solve x squared plus 4x minus 3 is equal to 0 and express your solution in the simplest radical form. The quadratic formula is just negative b plus minus radical b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So this is a very important formula that you should memorize, okay? That is the quadratic formula. So all you have to do here, this is a really simple problem, is just plug in values. So here, we know that our a is the value that's in front of the x squared, or the x that's being squared. In this case, we don't have any value in front of it, meaning that it's just a 1. So we know that our a is equal to 1. Our b is the value that's in front of the x that's not being squared, so we know that our b is 4. And our c is the value that is being left alone which is negative three, right? The sign matters. So now what we have to do is just plug these values in, okay? So what we'll, what we'll be left with is negative four if we're plugging that in for B, negative four plus minus the square root of four squared minus four times one times negative three, okay? Divided by two times one. So if you continue to simplify this, we'll get negative four plus minus radical 16 minus four times one, which is four, times negative three, which is negative 12. So 16 minus negative 12 is the same thing as saying four plus negative 12, uh, four plus 12, which is 28. So this is four plus minus radical 28 divided by two. Now, this is not your answer because you need to see whether or not radical 28 can be simplified any further. And the answer is yes, it can. So the way that we test this out is we split this up into two other radicals, okay? So radical 28 is what times what? Well, that's radical 28 times radical 1, but that doesn't count. So that's whatever. So radical 28 is also radical 14 times radical 2, but neither one of these are perfect squares, so we don't care about it. Then radical 28 is also equal to radical 7 times radical 4, and this is our this is our way to simplify it because radical four is a perfect square. So if we take this radical 28 and separate it into radical seven times radical four, radical four is equal to two and two times radical seven is equal to two rad seven. So we can rewrite this as negative four plus minus two rad seven over two. And now what we can do is we can divide this top side by two, right? Four, negative four over two is just equal to negative two and two over two is equal to one. One times radical seven is radical seven. 
So now you have negative 2 plus minus radical 7. So this plus minus means that you're either adding or subtracting. So there's two different answers. So x has to equal to negative 2 plus radical 7 or x has to equal to negative 2 minus radical 7. Right, so always remember that plus minus means that there are two solutions for this in this case, okay? And always remember that whenever your denominator can divide into the numerator, divide it, right? This 2 can go away because it's 7 times 2. This negative 4 can go away because it's divisible by 2, right? So that's the correct answer for this question. Number 34 asks us to solve the following system of equations algebraically for all values of x and y. So whenever we want to solve a system of equations algebraically, and we see that they're both in terms of y, all we do is just plug them into each other. So we know that this is equal to y, and that this is equal to y. So they're both set equal to the same thing. So I can just plug in the bottom equation into the top equation for y. So I can get that 2x minus 6 is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 12. And now I can just solve for x normally, okay? So if I add 6 on both sides, I'll get that 2x is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 18. And if I subtract 2x on both sides, I get that 0 is equal to x squared minus 9x plus 18. So the only way to solve a system or an equation like this is to set it equal to 0 and then to try and factor it out. So right now, we're looking for two values that are going to multiply into positive 18 but add into negative 9. And those two values are going to be negative 3 and negative 6, right? So negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18, but negative 3 plus negative 6 is equal to negative 9. So that means that we're using these two numbers that we found to split this negative 9 into those two numbers. So now we have 0 is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 6x plus 18. And now we can factor out. We can take out an x over here and we get x minus 3. We can take out a negative 6 over here, we get x minus 3. We can combine both of these outside terms into one parenthesis, x minus 6. And then we can combine both of these parentheses into 1 over here. And we get that 0 has to equal to x minus 6 times x minus 3. This isn't our answer, however. We want the actual values of x, not just the factored out version. So the trick here is to set both of these parentheses individually equal to x. Because as long as one of, because we're multiplying everything, if one of these parentheses is equal to 0, this whole thing is equal to 0. So the two values of x are going to be x minus 6 is equal to 0 and x minus 3 is equal to 0. So that means that x has to equal to 6 or 3. Okay, but they're asking us for all values of x and y. So if x is 6, what is y going to equal to? Well, we know that y is equal to 2x minus 6. So if y is equal to 3, 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 minus 6 is 0. So we know that it, one of the solutions has to be 6 comma 0. Okay, and the other solution well, when x it has to be when x is equal to 6. So 2 times 6 is 12, and 12 minus 6 is 6. So then the other point is going to be 6, 6. Okay, And I miswrote this point. This should be 3, 0. So that's how you write your answer. Okay, Pay attention uh, whether they're asking for only the value of x or the value of y. Okay, So in this case, they're asking you for both the value of x and the value of y. So you need to write down when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 0. When x is equal to 6, y is equal to 6 as two ordered pairs, okay? And that's every single question from part 3 reviewed. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If you want to move on to uh, the video that's going over part 5, or if you want to go back to part 2 or 1, those um, videos are linked in the description of this one. If you want additional help in other region subjects, like, al um, like Algebra 2, um, physics, chemistry, or living environment, or U.S. history. I do those, I reviewed over those tests as well, so the link to those playlists and those videos are also going to be found in the description of this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know again. I hope you guys learned something, and I hope you have a nice night.